Today we continue on with our NHL season preview series looking at the Los Angeles Kings as we go through the rest of the teams in the Pacific Division. What should we expect from them in the 22-23 season? Can they once again be a playoff team? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're doing a season preview for the LA Kings for the upcoming 22-23 season. Uh, if you're new to this series, what or how these uh, videos are going to be structured, so we're going to quickly recap the 21-22 season, take a look at how they did in a few key team stats, uh, analyze what happened in the playoffs, recent playoff history, then we're going to explore how this roster has changed over the course of the offseason, take a look at any prospects we feel might get an opportunity to make an impact this year, then we're going to look at their projected lineup and discuss uh, what I feel they're going to be able to accomplish this year. So let's dive in and get started with a 21-22 season recap. They were the third place team in the Pacific Division last year, qualifying for the playoffs with a record of 44 27 and 11 for 99 points. Uh, certainly their best season in recent memory here as this team has gone through a pretty extensive rebuild and been out of the playoffs for some time. Uh, they ended up scoring 239 goals for 20th best. So one of the uh, lower offensive ranked teams amongst the playoff teams for sure. Uh, they certainly wanted to go into this offseason looking for an opportunity to see if they could find some more firepower. And I think they've done that. Goals against were pretty solid, 236 goals against for 8th best. Uh, they had a lot of injuries on the blue line, and I thought the youngsters that stepped in did really well. Uh, and we also saw a goaltender in Jonathan Quick, who a lot of people thought might be kind of trending towards being done and might give way to Peterson to play more, but he said not so fast, and he certainly was a big part of those goals against being down. Uh, the power play was not good, 16.1% for 27th best. And the PK wasn't great either at 76.7% for 22nd best. Now, in my honest opinion, I think part of the reason they were able to do as well as they did is they were kind of able to feast off of other teams in their division. Like, they were not in an overly uh, competitive division last year. We saw, obviously, the other teams that were pretty low in the, the standings. Like, there are other uh, California teams like the Sharks, the Ducks. The Kraken, uh, the Vancouver Canucks got off to a bad start, finished stronger, obviously. Vegas had a, a kind of up-and-down season as well. Uh, and they were able to pick up some points, even though like there weren't a top-10 scoring team or a top-10 team in either of the key special teams. They were able to get enough wins and get into the playoffs. Now, unfortunately, they lost in the first round against the Edmonton Oilers. It was uh, uh, just too much to handle for them. Uh, they haven't won a playoff series since they won the Stanley Cup in 2014, but most of those years being out of the playoffs since. So certainly uh, it was nice to see them get back in, but I think it's fair to say as well that there was lots of work to be done off of last year's um, you know emergence, you could say, to be able to really be more seriously taken to be a, a consistent playoff team. Of course, our head coach is Todd McClellan entering his fourth year behind the bench. GM Rob Blake's been at the helm now for over five years, uh, and this team is certainly in pretty good hands. I think Blake's done a pretty good job, and McClellan's done a pretty good job as well kind of getting this team back on track. Now, let's take a look at how the roster changed through the offseason. Let's start with some key additions, and there's not much, but the one main thing that's there is significant, and that's Kevin Fiala, who they picked up in a trade from the Minnesota Wild. Obviously, like I mentioned, they didn't score enough last year, and the power play needs to be better, and Fiala is going to be, or at least he should be, a big help in that. We saw Fiala uh, kind of have some contractual issues with Minnesota, not being able to agree on a long-term deal. Part of that was due to their cap situation, uh, for sure. And uh, the Kings were able to take advantage of that and bring Fiala in. So he's going to be a big part of the team this coming year and, and moving forward since he inked a long-term contract. Uh, and, of course, they have Nate Thompson in camp right now on a PTO. Uh, that decision on his PTO may or may not be decided before this makes it to YouTube. So I apologize as these record videos are being recorded uh, in batches ahead of time. So um, obviously as camp goes along here, it could be two, three, four days before the video gets posted. So that may have been decided upon uh, or not before this goes live. Now, of course, looking at how the team has uh, lost some players in the key subtractions, well, longtime King Dustin Brown has retired. Uh, so he's no longer with the club. So that's Certainly a big blow. He's he's been around a long time as a good leader, uh, you know, a fairly productive player through the bulk of his career. Uh, so he'll be missed. Of course, Andreas Athanasiu is no longer there. Same with the guys like Ollie Matta, Martin Furk, but really nothing too drastic outside of the loss of Brown. Really nothing substantial in my opinion. But yet you got Fiala coming in. So like I said, 
getting more goals and being more offensive should be able to be done this year. And I do expect as well that maybe some of the younger players as well might be able to step up and uh, help produce a little more offense. Having Drew Doughty healthy will also be a factor as well. Now, do they have any prospects that we can expect to be either be in the lineup regularly or to have an impact? And the answer to that is maybe not. Like some of the younger players that are in expected to be on the lineup, I wouldn't really call them prospects anymore because they've played enough games. I usually don't consider guys NHL prospects once they've played more than 30 or 40 NHL games. So a player like a Quinton Byfield or a Kaliev or, you know, Dursey, Bjornfoot, like I, I think they've played enough that they're not really prospects. I expect them to be there. They're basically regular NHL players at this point. Uh, you get Alex Turcotte, a very highly drafted, highly touted uh, centerman from the uh, United States National Team Development Program has yet to really break through. Uh, I do wonder what the future holds for him. I don't know for sure he'll get an opportunity this year, but he's definitely going to be a key prospect to watch. Uh, I do wonder what uh, the season will bring for him. Uh, Brent Clark is an exciting young defenseman on the back end. Um, I don't know that he's going to be on the roster to start, but I wonder where things will go. Um, They very well likely send him back. Uh, Samuel Fadjimo as well, another Real solid prospect. Uh, I wonder if they can build him into the lineup this year as well. Some of these players, too, the problem is is that uh, the reason they haven't had more opportunity is that they need to be in more of a top six, top nine role. Uh, obviously, not all these players are cut out to be what you expect from your fourth line. And when you uh, don't have openings, it's, it's hard to beat out an established veteran player. But we'll see what can happen. Those are the kind of the key guys I want to keep an eye on this year, but I'm not sure we're going to see a ton of NHL time really for any of them. Uh, But let's look at the projected lineup for the upcoming season. Uh, Your top line likely is going to feature Captain Anze Kopitar with Kevin Fiala and Adrian Kempe. I suspect that'll be your your, uh, number one line. Uh, Philip Deneau likely centers your number two center role uh, with uh, Victor Arvidsson and probably Trevor Moore, I think, will be on that line. You might be able to put Aya Fallow there as well. That's a possibility. Uh, but right now I have Aya Fallow on the third line with Kaliev and Byfield. Uh, Byfield, to me, really needs to take a step this year uh, or there's going to be a lot more concerns considering how highly drafted he was as well. Uh, to have guys like Byfield and Turcotte drafted in the top three spots in you know two, three years down the road, not having a more significant impact I think for a lot of fan bases and to a degree management is definitely concerning but for Byfield I know he's had some injuries and looking at the lineup in front of him he hasn't been able to play real high up in the lineup either so I don't think it's time to panic yet but it's a big year for him and he needs to take a step forward for sure, I expect your fourth line to likely be a combination of Grandstrom, uh, Lemieux, and Lazat. Um, but there's other guys there in the mix too. But uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Thompson or uh, some other guys that are around. But that's likely your your forward group. Whereas on the back end, you're going to have uh, Drew Doughty probably playing with uh, Anderson, uh, Walker, and Roy probably your second pair with Dursey and Bjornfoot likely being your third pair with Jonathan Quick and Cal Peterson once again between the pipes now as i mentioned what should we expect from the kings this year can they make the playoffs again should they be a better team Uh, and my answer to those questions to me is i think they're going to be a little bit better i I do think that they have a shot at making the playoffs i don't think it's a guarantee Uh, i do think because partially uh they were third place last year and i know a lot of media or nhl personalities that, that make projections and stuff A lot of people are predicting that they're probably going to be around third again. And I think that's reasonable. But I also think it could be reasonable for them to slip a little bit if team like Vegas, for example, is able to get back to what they were used to be. I mean, obviously Vegas has a big question mark between the pipes. But I think there's a lot to like about the rest of the roster. So I I wonder if they might be able to pass LA if they can get some good goaltending. That's going to be a big question mark. Of course, Vancouver Another team who started poorly last year uh, under Bruce Boudreau, though, they're much better. They have largely the same group. Will they be better? I, I wonder. LA is going to have some competition there from Vegas and Vancouver for that number three spot. And I, I, I they probably can hang on. It's just not a guarantee. Uh, to me, I think uh, Fiala has to fit in well. He has to produce at, a, at the same or higher level than he did before in Minnesota. Uh, and at the same time, you need the special teams to be better. You can't be that low in the power play in PK and expect to be a consistent 
playoff team. Now, they didn't really change a lot of the personnel, so I'm not sure that the the PK is going to be better. I mean, you get the same coaching staff. you got this largely the same personnel, but really, like, they have some players that should be good on the PK. I mean, obviously, I would think guys like Kopitar and Deneau, who are pretty good two-way centers, should be able to be a big help there as well. Hopefully, they can keep their more experienced D healthy this year. That'll be a big factor for them. And I mean, the PK could probably be a little bit better just from that. But they, they definitely have some room for improvement. So I think they can. They have a chance to do it. I wouldn't rule it out. I do think there's a you know finishing third is is very likely, uh, if not third or fourth. So playoffs are certainly within reach. I don't know that it's a guarantee, though. Uh, and we'll, we'll uh, examine the central teams here in a bit and see where they stand. But right now, the LA Kings, I think, are still going to be a young, exciting team with some mix with some good veterans. Uh, they made a good offseason addition in Kevin Fiala. I do expect them to be as good or better than last year. It's just a matter of have the other teams gotten better again to the point that they might be able to either compete or pass them. That's going to be the tricky part that we won't know until things get going, but I like what they're doing. I think they're on the right track and I'll be curious to see just how well they do. So let me know your expectations for the LA Kings down in the comments and we can discuss further. Do you see them being a playoff team? Where do you see them ranking in their division? Let me know and we'll talk further in the comments section. Of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you stick around for the rest of the teams in this series as well as all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all the entire 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>